In this video, I want to give you some intuition for computational expressions in F sharp, specifically why we use them to begin with. As you might know, by now, the asynchronous keywords that we've used in the past are computational expressions, but it's not clear yet, or we haven't made it clear why we actually need those and what kind of functionality comes with the computational expressions to begin with. So to just illustrate the point of why we want to introduce these for future videos, I'm going to show you a quick comparison example. I'm going to write an example where I'm going to log some numbers during a computation. So we would imagine this is part of our program and we're sort of doing some calculations, logging those. And we're going to see that that's a lot simpler or the code becomes a lot cleaner when we do that with a computation expression. So to kick this off, let's just write a simple log function. So we would do log number. And then in the implementation here, we would just do print fn. And then we would say number is and here we would put our number. And here I will spell this correctly, print fn like that. Good. So imagine now that we're in the program and we would sort of define some numbers. So we would let x be three, let's say. And then after this, we would want to log x. Imagine we want to log between every step in our computation like this so that we get it printed to some file or, or whatever. Then we would define another variable y, that would be two, let's say. And then we would log y um, like that. And finally, we would define a third variable, let z equals x plus y like that. And finally, we would log z. Okay, this would work. I mean, I can run this now and we're going to see in the console that we get all the printouts that we would expect. So we can see numbers three, two, five, that corresponds to x being three, y being two, and then z being five. We could do this in a lot more sophisticated way, but you get the idea. The thing I want to point out here is you see the code becomes very dirty very quickly because we introduce all these log statements in it and that doesn't look very clean. It's going to make it hard to read the code for someone who's new and it's not a great way to, to write the code. For that reason, computation expressions can be very useful. So they allow us to inject code in between statements that gets shielded, let's say, or hidden from the person who's actually reading the, the main part of the functionality. So that way you can write pretty complex pieces of code, but it doesn't really look that complex from the outside. It makes it a lot more readable. So what we would do for this is to make use of a computation expression. And because we haven't really talked about those, I'm just going to copy the definition of one right into the code. It would look like this. There would be a logging builder. And you can see here that it has like a very similar structure to before. I'm not going to go into the details of how this is implemented for now, but we'll just take that as God given for, for the moment. And then we'll say, let the logger be an instance of this. So new um, logging builder. Okay, like that. What we can do then is we can define a computation expression with this logger. So the way that would look is, is the following. So we would have curly braces, that's how we um, write these. And you might recall that this is the same as we did for asynchronous tasks. And what we can do in here is we can then use the lead bang and do bang and all of these keywords that we talked about in the asynchronous video um, instead of let. So we'll get into the details of why we use those instead. And for that, for now, that's not really important, but I would do something that looks very similar to the example we did before by defining x being three, y being two, and then z being the sum of those two, right? So like that, that's exactly the same thing that we did before. In these computational expressions, um, we need to return something as well. In this case, we're not really interested in returning a value, so I'll just return unit. But you can see that this compiles nicely. Now, the neat thing is, if I run this code, what you're gonna see is because we used this logger, we get these printouts here. And just to show you that it's actually the, the new values, let me just update one of these so that they're different from before. You can see that when I execute, the numbers that we have in here get printed. But the thing is, we haven't specified anywhere here that we're actually gonna print it. That information is encoded within this logger, which is the computation expression builder that, um, well, that we're wrapping our computations within. So what actually happens here is we do some executions, some calculations of our code, in between each statement, there is an injection of the code that you can see up here, which contains this logger. 
So the logger actually gets called in between each statement here. And that's a way that you can make the main parts of your code, namely this part right here, a lot more readable for someone who's new or just, well, just more readable in general um, without, well, uh, yeah, without making it much more complex for um, as far as the implementation goes. So we'll get into the details of all these functions. That's going to be a focus topic of upcoming videos. But for now, I hope you can see the utility of having these computation expressions. They allow us to do complex pieces of functionality in a way that's very seamless to the person writing the code.